Um, so for the benefit of the folks who, who weren't there, can you kind of just walk through at a very high level what you talked about? Yeah, so uh, so this was the second uh, iteration of this panel we've mm. been doing. We did we started off last year, uh, the previous year, because it was a space theme, mm. and this year it was off theme. So we're like, all right, we we, should, we put a lot more anime into this. And, you know, <laughs> what happened was uh, the previous year, uh, a guy in the audience came up and introduced himself. Was like, hey, you know, I work at Goddard Space Flight Center. We should talk. <laughs> and that was Con- uh, Conrad Schiff, who was on the panel, and he's a you know big anime nerd himself, which mm. is I always found surprising, but it's pretty cool. So yeah. you know, we started talking through what to do and we're like all right let's just do this kind of fact or fiction fairy tale you know that mm. works into the fairy tale theme mm. uh so yeah we talked about um was it we did uh gundam talked about mm-hmm. the the space colonies at Lagra- lagrangian points mm-hmm. which was a great way for us to kind of talk into you know what are these lagrangian points these special places in space and why were these space colonies uh put there instead of some other random place in space uh we talked about planet tests and the problem of orbital debris and uh, you know how to prevent it how to solve it now and you know why is it such a big problem uh like why is nasa so worried about it mm. uh and we talked about the completely incredible scene from cowboy bebop uh <laughs> uh the wild horses episode mm. where spike is uh about to do uncontrolled entry to the atmosphere and is rescued by a, a, a refurbished space shuttle orbiter <laughs> with all sorts of crazy <laughs> retrofitted uh, <laughs> devices uh in probably the most incredible orbital rendezvous of all time <laughs> so it's like you know what Everyone knows this scene is nonsense, but let's get into why, just so we can show mm. how great this scene is. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that, that did almost bring a tear to the eye. I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, it's amazing. It's so good. I really love the idea, too, of like, the idea that, you know, in 100 years from now, or whatever the timeline was, mm. that like, people will be refurbishing these now ancient spacecraft. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, we can get this to work. <laughs> well, there was so much nostalgia to that episode. There, there was so much love for the space program in that episode that you just, you know, you couldn't help but just grin for how much they were having fun with it. And just that hero shot of the orbiter <laughs> approaching, just like, oh my God, look at that thing. <laughs> yes, um... As high budget as Cowboy Bebop was, you know, there was somebody who was just loving every minute of drawing that shuttle. You know, it yeah, was just yeah. oh. all those little tiles. <laughs> Should exactly. I um, w- were there any other shows you considered talking about that didn't make the cut? Oh, let me think. Man, I'm trying to think of ones off the top of my head. Yeah. Oh, we had some like kind of more outlandish ones. Like we talked, we thought about uh, Space Brothers, but it was kind of mm. like. This seems pretty on the level, and neither of us have really seen much of it. Uh, and we yeah. didn't have time to watch the whole series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd, I've seen a few episodes, and, and it just seemed kind of like, yeah, this seems pretty on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, my friend kept bugging me to watch to do Space Dandy. I'm like, you know, I haven't seen much of Space Dandy. <laughs> yeah. I've seen some AMVs, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to work. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. You know, I, I kind of think that uh, Outlaw Star with the whole oh, yeah. ar- grappling oh, yeah. arms and mm. concept might might. Hmm. You know, because the the use of arms in space uh, and yeah. uh, the navigation oh, logistics, mm. uh, from what I've seen of Space Dandy, it's cool. But uh, Outlaw Star had a little bit more of the navigational aspect to it, and then there's a whole bunch of uh, similar uh, mm. uh, navigation stories. Mm. Uh, you know, it's funny. I had kind of thought about Outlaw Star and just kind of thought of it in passing, and I was like, oh, I bet there's something to those arms. And if I had thought of comparing them to the RMS on the shuttle, like the robot arm or yeah. station, that definitely would have been in there. So, Holy you know, we <laughs> may or may not be doing the panel again next year, and if we nice. are, we might have to get in there. So. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, Space Dandy is Flash Gordon. It's just, you know, yeah. it, it's fun. It's but fun. <laughs> no. Uh, so, again, I've seen a bunch of AMVs for it. I was like, I don't know about this show, but I like that ferret-looking dude. He's <laughs> like, oh, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a really fun show, but it, it's space blasters and, you know, wormholes and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, I think next up on my list is my friends have been pressuring me for a long time to finally watch uh, Madoka. They're all like, it's oh, what it yeah. looks like. I'm like, all right, all right, sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I got two episodes in, and e- even knowing where the story goes, I was like, yeah. not for me. Yeah, so um, I was like, I haven't know. seen any. And I was like, I've seen, again, I watch a lot of AMVs with this crew. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I'll give it a fair shot. You know, yep. we can open mine. We'll see how it goes. And I've got this damn crunchy roll subscription I can't <laughs> remember to cancel. So <laughs> Man, hasn't Crunchyroll kind of change the industry oh my god like i was just i, I just told someone today a co-worker of mine mm-hmm. who it, it, it's funny because he was a big time anime nerd in high school and it kind mm-hmm. of fell away and we just kind of discovered you know that we both were into this stuff and he's just kind of like coming back to it and i told him about crunchy rule and he's like 
are you serious? <laughs> yeah, man. Like, like, damn kids these days haven't spoiled. Like, you know, <laughs> they do. Go, like, like, I used to be like, I can't find Showbits episode nine on Kazaa. <laughs> now it's just like you can. Like, I had this moment. I was sitting on the train watching SAO. I'm like, I'm watching mm. this live. Mm. And like, it, it, you know, and like, don't they air it like an hour after? Yeah. Japan too. And it's like, it's like seven bucks a month or something crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, this is bonkers. It's like, oh my god, I would have killed for this. <laughs> yeah. And in you know high def as opposed yeah. to the you know 140p we were getting back in the day i'm thinking of the vhs there oh, yeah. was a dub of a dub of a dub that <laughs> yeah yeah you can make i know a guy them. who uh he, he uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've heard of matt pison he's actually the one and only staffer who's gone to who staffed every single oticon wow he uh he used to complain about like you know you think you know because i was easy i used to used to bring the tapes to the convention yeah. and just like record on site <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I was at Gen Con a couple of weeks ago, and actually last year there, I did a, um, I do some anime panels at Gen Con because it's a gaming convention. They don't have a huge anime, um, uh, well, they have actually an anime area, but not a lot of folks doing panels. Um, so there's kind of a hole there, and I had this guy come come up, and he is, I think he said he's 78 years old. Wow. Um, and he's been an anime fan since like 1968. Wow. Um, <laughs> and wow. that's incredible. Yeah. That's to watch like a whole medium grow up like that. <laughs> it was just crazy. And talking about, uh, uh, you know, anime conventions and, oh, yeah, I remember when they started. Um, and and just, just going through that whole thing. And, again, you know, the VHS tapes and talking about how, you know, back when Dealer's Room was just the three guys that you knew who had anime yeah. that they just wanted to get rid of. And they would just sort of dump their stuff on a table. Um, you know, that that was your market. So. Wow. I've, de I've been definitely meaning to seek out, like, you know, the last few years it's just been kind of like, you know, doing Otakon and doing mm. Anime Boston and, like, you know, AUSA when it was bigger. And it's like, mm. I need to seek out some smaller cons again. Mm. It's like, there's something about that feeling of a really, like, a thousand, two thousand person con. Yeah. It's just like, this is really weird and this is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, there's a small one that started in Roanoke where um, the guy attended one of my panels and said, hey, I'm starting this, this convention down here. Would you submit your panels? Because I, I need people. Um, and, um, I ended up being like, I think I did like 40% of their panels just, wow. be just because, you know, no one else signed up. Yeah. Um, but what was cool is it made me 200, 300 people. And so like you knew people, like you came to my panel, you know, an hour ago and right, then, right, right. you know, I passed you in the hall and, oh, you had that great costume yesterday. And there's just, there is that kind of little community that builds over the course of three days that you just don't get at an Oticon. Yeah, you really yeah. feel the community level of it. You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can totally buy that. Because, I mean, at Oticon, especially for us, like, we are so slammed in that room mm -hmm. that's like, I, I don't have time to... I mean, I literally got about 45 minutes in the dealer's room. That was pretty much the only time I left uh, the room the whole weekend other than yeah. to go back to sleep. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, you don't really, uh, you know, you don't really... It's just like every... You kind of have to just... Be like, all right, you get. Are you in the line? Get in the line. Are you not? I can't talk to you. Go away. <laughs> so, how did you get started going to cons? Um, so, I think my first con was actually. I don't know if you guys have heard of Aresia. It was uh, no. a sci-fi and fantasy convention in, Balta, uh, in Boston. I did hear about that once. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of got talked into going in high school, and mm. it's just like, all right, I don't really know what this is all about, but this is kind of cool, and it's a little bit on the. It's a little rough. Mm. <laughs> it's pretty small. It's pretty funky. Uh, but it was pretty interesting, too, and they can hear the sounds of New York in the background. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing that was fun about it for us was they had uh, a couple of 24-hour rooms. Ooh. So, like, they had an anime room that played animated for the entire convention and, like, some oh. movies for the entire convention, which was great because when you're crazy and broke in high school, you mm. just go and, like, and you don't get a hotel room. You're just like, all right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to crash in this room. <laughs> no, I was like, I'm just like, and they tell you, you can't fall asleep. I'm like, okay, what, I'm not. I'm watching. And <laughs> I, I have these, like, I'm fever asleep. dreams of watching Kimba the White Lion for, like, seven hours. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, sleep. Like, I wake up, and the, guy, the staffer's asleep. I'm like, ah, I win. <laughs> uh, and then from there, um, and my Boston was found in mm. 2003, mm -hmm. and I just naturally went to that. I'm like, all right, yeah, mm. sure. And I actually had gone to every single Anime Boston up until, I think, 2010. Wow. Um, you know, I, just, I eventually started staffing that in 2006 because it's just like, cool. hey, you know, this seems pretty cool. You know, mm. kind of, you know, help make this thing happen, get a free T-shirt and a hotel mm. and all that stuff. Um, and once I started staffing the cons, I was kind of no going back because, mm -hmm. like, it's just like, you know, it feels like you're doing something there. And mm. th to, to be honest, like, you know, I'm a big anime fan, but at this point, like, I'm not – gonna spend a whole day going to like a whole lot of panels or a lot of viewings and mm, stuff like that mm -hmm. i've got my couple of events i really want to hit up and you know kind of walk wander around take some photos but 
And then I found myself with like too much time on my hands. So it's like, this mm. is perfect. You know, it's giving me stuff to do, giving me some structure this weekend. And it also ends up kind of making the whole thing free, which is pretty nice. Yeah. So like when I went down to Otakon in 2008 as an attendee, I'm like, this is crazy. I got nothing to do. And so I you know, ended up joining up on there and I've been there ever since. Nice. Cool. So how do you manage that schedule? Because I, I know some people go in and they just, you know, they, they, uh, they, they volunteer all weekend and just, you know, put out time for one thing. How do you manage yeah. it? So, uh, Otakon's a bit of a different beast. Mm. Uh, honestly, the way we end up picking the, like, you know, you, you pretty much end up trying to staff the events that you care about. And, you know, because uh-huh. the thing is, like, you know, most of the people, like, all the people in the AMV theater, we all know each other. Like, we've all, you know, mm-hmm. you know, kind of, that's, what's crazy about the AMV theater that makes it a little bit different is, I don't know if you guys saw the guy with the giant glasses, the tall guy there, but his yeah. name is Vic, and he, mm. that's his theater, and most of that gear is his, his oh. personal gear. <laughs> like, so that screen, that... That was theirs, and the seats mm. were theirs, <laughs> but the computer, the projector, the microphones, mm. everything is all his, so he kind of handpicks the crew there. Uh, so yeah, I mean, going into it, we know what the schedule's gonna be, for our room at least, a long time, like, ahead of time, and we basically try to, what I personally do is I try to super heavy load uh, Friday and Saturday to leave myself with, if not all, most of Sunday free. Because uh. that way I can, you know, that's how I like managed to squeeze out a couple hours to go have lunch with Conrad or like do a mad dash to the dealer's room. Um, and to be honest, I didn't even end up looking at the schedule for the rest of the convention wow. just because it's just, you know, you know, this is definitely not helping with Otakon recruitment. I will point out at other departments, <laughs> it's a, other departments are a little bit different. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's also just because in the lead up to the convention, it's a little bit crazy. There are always people mm. like panelists dropping in and out and, you know, yeah. you got video uh, blocks dropping in and out. But so, yeah, it's pretty much as a matter of I try to maximize my f- continuous free time. So mm. that's why on Saturday I started working at 10 a.m. And other than a few breaks, I went all the way till about 2.30 a.m. Wow. That's what it took to free up Sunday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of, and it's, it's so funny too. I mean, it's work, it's but fun. it's also, it's definitely fun. It's super, super satisfying. And, you know, it's. You know, I never sleep better than at Otakon I'm so exhausted. And it's, it just feels great. You just wake up and like, all right, go back, do this crazy stuff again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, is, um, uh, you know, kind of going back to the, the, the space thing. Um, sure. Um, is there anything in anime that you kind of wish they would um, uh, address in, uh, you know, about space or, or, or science fiction? Are, is there, are there any sort of holes you think that uh, anime could fill? Yeah, um, it'd be really cool. This this a good chance this exists. Mm. I would love to see a show that kind of uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the book Red Mars by Kim Stanley mm. Robinson, mm-hmm. but just kind of like a down to down to Mars <laughs> approach to you know the colonization of Mars and just kind of you know I think anime has a real a, a real um, it's really per- perfect for this kind of a thing because you've got this long time frame to work with. You've got these you know this great art. Uh, you're a little bit freed from you don't need to, need a giant budget to have this really visually striking thing. You know, I think something in the, uh, along the lines of Red Mars, where they followed a bunch of people uh, doing a realistic setup of Mars, would be really interesting. Yeah. But I also realize that like my taste for this kind of stuff is a little bit crazy. <laughs> like you know, I really like them to get you know, I get a little bit frustrated when stuff isn't really uh, exact, mm. uh, but. I also really love stuff like Armageddon on the same side. So, oh, yeah. I don't know. It's a little bit tough. Like, honestly, the, the thing that bothers me a lot about this stuff is kind of, um, you know, like Planet Test. Like, I really, really enjoyed it. And the mm-hmm. thing that gets me is you end up with these, like, super anime tropes, which mm-hmm. is like, you know, like, you know guys, like, I really love this stuff. But, like, you know, for instance, like the crazy zany boss who's always just kind of like, you know, <laughs> hold on things and, like, in that show particularly. It's kind of like, you know, I'm really digging the show, but... This guy seems really out of place, and it's, it seems like, or like the the forced mascot, which you saw that in Space Brothers too, I believe, mm-hmm. that, that, that pug. Mm-hmm. So, like, that, that was actually one of the things that drew me to SAO, is it seemed like they kind of dodge a lot of the tropes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I guess one side of me wants to see a really, you know, something along the lines of Planet Test, in which they're really mm-hmm. kind of like realistic hardware, realistic uh, visuals, and all that stuff. But also, you know, something that can inspire people to, like, care about this stuff. You know, why, yeah. you know people. You know, why is it important to get people to Mars? Why is it important to have these people living in space eating lettuce like they're doing today? Like, yes, is, that's awesome. Why are we spending all this money on it? And I think anime has a lot of potential to really show mm. why it's all worth it. You know, everything from the, you know, short future scale to, you know, showing, you know, stuff like the Gundam showing like, look, mm. we can have millions and millions of people living in space their whole lives and this is all viable and all we got to do is go get it. Yeah. Well, and it, it's funny because you look back at the early days of, of anime when it sort of grew out of kids, um, it's kid stuff, and it was primarily these stories about 
the, these science fiction stories about going out and we just talk about Yamato and you know, Harlock and Gundam and all yeah, these Galaxy things. Express. And, and the, you know, Galaxy Express. And you know, they were trying to inspire people about you know, the, the future and where we were going. Um, yeah. yeah. It's it, interesting. I think sci-fi kind of took a pretty big dystopian turn the last couple of decades. You, yeah. you talk about stuff like Terminator and The Matrix. And it's interesting. I really I read this great book uh, called Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson recently. Oh, yeah. Which was uh, and it was completely incredible, blew me away. Especially because mm. it very much gets into like nitty gritty, realistic space flight stuff. Mm. But also because I guess part of the prompt was, you know, why don't you write a sci-fi book that shows that sci-fi is, uh, science is good? Uh, oh that, like, yeah, science can help us. Less dystopia. And, <laughs> yeah, so it's like not quite utopian, but it's mm. like, hey, you know, you know, what is it like? Asteroids are nature's way of asking how that space program's going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that kind of stuff would be really, would be really nice to see in space stuff. But yeah, I mean, I should probably just get around to finally seeing like stuff like Space Brothers and kind of mm. knock that stuff off my list. <laughs> it seems like it'd be pretty enjoyable. Yeah, I was looking at. I, th I thought I saw 103 episodes or something. I don't know. Is it? Wow, it's a long one, really? I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a long one. Uh, and initially, I thought, okay, yeah, 26. I'll bang it out yeah. in a weekend. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. maybe I can digest this a little while. <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. They, they just released season four, so it's it's going on. I guess I'll be in it for the long haul then. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 and and I know very little about it other, other than those facts. I'm like, that's 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 quite a commitment to that kind of a story. But you know, it's it, it the first I'd heard of it was at your panel discussion, and so mm. now it's on my list. It's on my radar. So that's uh, <laughs> definitely yeah. something that uh, I want to check out. What's interesting about that too is I know that JAXA was involved in an mm -hmm. official way, uh, official capacity. So you end up with like. Um, you have like cameos by real astronauts. I think, uh, uh, in fact, they're believe it, there's actually audio, dubbed audio that was recorded on station. Remember when that, that happened? Show, yep. Which is wow. like, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. Remember when they, were, when they were scheduling that call and they're like, so um, here's why we're making this call. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he says, really? Yeah, okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah, wow. yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty impressive. Cool. Anything else you have on well, uh, I'm I'm curious uh, mm. with the with the whole AMV scene. Mm. Well, yeah. What what your take is on that for for those who who are not familiar with the AMV scene and mm. what it is and how it's kind of uh, come about. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe that? And Man, uh, so it's a really strange thing, especially my involvement in it, considering that like I don't make AMVs. Mm. But uh, so AMVs are anime music videos. People take anime clips, they put it to music, and they you know th the traditional genres are trailer slash parody mm -hmm. uh drama slash serious romance slash sentimental action upbeat slash dance and comedy uh mm. and we've been uh toying with cosplay mvs lately oh interesting it seems like it's uh, a little bit tough because that's kind of a different community it's not really mm -hmm. on the same wavelength um but yeah so people will make these things and you know there's traditionally you have these these contests people submit stuff uh, I mean, the way that uh, I believe other conventions work, but the way AUSA and uh, Oticon works is, you know, everyone submits their videos by a certain date, and then there's a pre-screenings, which is when uh, a whole bunch of, you know, we get about 20 people all together in a room, and for Oticon, it's about, um, you know, 100, 130 videos, mm -hmm. and we watch AMVs all day long for like nine hours. <laughs> um, and, you, you know, people usually start busting out some of the drinks around the romance section, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's all <laughs> and then we kind of vote on which ones, uh, you know, vote on quality, technical quality, narratives, and all that stuff to decide what makes it in, and then they kind of accumulate that all together, and that's how we end up with the final videos. Uh, but what's crazy about my involvement in this is I kind of independently discovered AMVs, like stuff like animemusicvideos.org, in high school, and I was really into it, and then by pure chance, uh, my college buddy who lived across the hall from me knew uh alan chase vic bond and all these guys who were like you know wow. kind of like like these are like big names in mm. this weird little circle uh and so once i started hanging out with them it's like oh like it was just like weird at first it was like hanging out with celebrities like oh my god <laughs> like you're brian moore you're one of the guys that made amv hell and he was just, mm. like, just, like, just like this goober i'm like yeah i'm brian <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it, it, you know and once i started joining up with like staffing it it's just like you know you end up doing, doing all the pre-screenings you uh you know, helping, you know, for instance, my biggest contribution is I help write the ballot counting software to handle all 2,500 nice. or so ballots that we get. Um, I got to count that fast. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just really, really love the, the art form. I really enjoy, you know, it's the good, great stuff is great. The bad stuff is great in its own way. And it's just like, you know, everyone always kind of makes a big you know, deal of groaning about watching all nine hours. But it's all, I always really super enjoy it. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's great stuff. Wow. 
So, so are there, are, are there, th- are, do you guys uh, send out any, any themes or is it just the general categories? So like, mm. uh, oh, just this categories. year inspire. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if other conventions do something like that. I wouldn't be surprised. Hmm. So the Otakon AMV contest is a little bit weird in a couple of ways. Uh, for one thing, uh, we don't accept what we call troll videos. So oh, yeah. the idea mm-hmm. being, you know, it kind of got to this point where we're like, okay, Otakon's pretty big and we got a pretty solid contest. You know, it's kind of like between us and Awa for a little bit there, which mm-hmm. is a lot more mm-hmm. AMB focused. So we introduced this rule where if you have won your category or best in show at any other show, you can't be in the Otakon AMV contest That's finals. That's good. Oh, yeah. That was the exception. That keeps it fresh. Yeah. But yeah the, the only exception is uh, if you, like, submitted... And then the Otakon deadline happens, and then you won after the fact. Mm-hmm. Like, well, all right, oh, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's a little bit controversial. Some people oh, yeah. get a little bit annoyed because the thing is, there's a lot. We it kills us. We get these really, really good videos, mm-hmm. and then we find out that it won at some little 500 person con. It's like, mm-hmm. dude, uh, I'm sorry. Like we're gonna play. <laughs> we'll play it at Overflow, and everyone will say that's great. Why did it make finals? And we'll say, well, because the dude won somewhere else. Uh. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, I think that's one thing that really helps with the quality of our contest. Mm-hmm. We really go out of our way to, you know, we try to pull in, you know, big talent and and really try to get people to hold their best for us, which, you know, it's a good thing that people went along with that because, you know, it's kind of a bold claim, but it really paid off and it ends up putting together a pretty good show. Absolutely. No, I, I remember the, the, the controversy when that happened, um, but you know, the fact that folks responded and saying, well, you know, yeah. th- th- this can go two ways. Which way do you want it to go? Um, it, it totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally, you know, it, it's, it's funny. I think I like to think a lot about what it's like from the attendee point of view. Mm. I think a lot of people have misconceptions about like that. You know, we're just like you get a lot of notes on the back of ballots. Like, you know, <laughs> too many romance videos or like yeah. stop making Lincoln Park videos. Oh, like, yeah. You know, like, you know, we don't really judge it like that. Like mm. if someone makes a solid Lincoln Park video, we're going to put it in there, you mm-hmm. know, or like people complaining. You know, there's always the anime of the year, and some people say there's too many Madoka videos. Yeah. Like, yeah well, Madoka came out last year; it's pretty popular. You know, <laughs> we used to have too many FMA videos. Now we got too many Attack on Titan videos. That's how it's gonna be. <laughs> yep. Uh, so it's pretty. It, and, you know, it's just we put a lot of debate into stuff like you know, the biggest controversy right now is how do we handle uh, so-called hell style videos? Oh yeah. Like you know, for instance, uh, if you submit uh, like a six-minute video that's got 12, 30-second clips. Is that an AMV? Mm. And, and then it's kind of like, you know, my personal take is no, that's 12 AMVs. Because mm-hmm. the thing mm. is, people are only going to, re- you could have 11 stinkers, but if one person, if you really like one of them, you're going to remember that and you're going to mm. vote for it. So mm-hmm. it kind of gives you this, you know, all extra shots at it. And so we've been debating a lot, like, is this a problem? If it's a problem, should we ban it? If we mm. do, how do we define it? Where people get upset mm. about that, you know, the audience likes it. And, you know, this is, it's crazy how much thought gets put into the, you know what at the end of the day is like a pretty small thing on a global scale, but you know that's what makes it great. You know we put way too much effort into it, and mm-hmm. that's what makes it fun. Yeah. <laughs> have you found submissions have uh, increased in in number uh, as um, editing software has uh, become more mm-hmm. available to folks to do creative it's, stuff? It's pretty standard, and in fact, this year we're down a little bit. Oh, Interesting. I can't remember, we we're trying to we had a good idea for oh we Otacon was slightly earlier this year, and we had a oh, theory. Yeah that essentially we lost a lot of people whose standard uh, uh, operation was to you know, hit summer vacation and get to work. Mm. All of a sudden, their window for working was a lot, lot shorter. Whoa, so we were, ah, the date yeah, is exactly. approached. Oh, mm. wait. <laughs> we had got something like, I think it was like 139, then 138, then 135, like, you know, and I don't mm. know if it was that order. Mm. Pretty standard, roughly around 130, 140. And this year, I think we got about around 100. Wow. And we do expect it probably to go back up again. But yeah, yeah. It, it varies huh. a fair amount uh, from year to year. Yeah. With with Otakon moving, uh, what do you anticipate with the move? Mm. Oh my God! Like, it's like the promised land. Every, <laughs> every, every, every problem is like it's gonna, we're going to fix it DC. We're going to fix it in DC. It's going to be great. And my th- personal theory is like we've kind of like squeezed everything we can out of the BCC mm. such that we're like at this level up here. And like the new place, the potential is so much higher, but it's going to be the new place. And everyone's going to be kind of confused. So yeah. I think the actual execution is going to be like mm. pretty comparable. But then mm-hmm. the year after that is just going to be far and away better. Like mm. as far as A&B theater, we're looking forward to a bigger room. Mm. We're looking forward to like places to put the line, which you don't really think <laughs> about. Like, you know, mm. our line control, you know, there's, no, oh, you yeah. know, those guys in access control mm. who handle the lines are like, they're, you know, <laughs> We need more of them, and there's not many of them because it's a really tough and thankless job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, you know, they're just completely overwhelmed, which is why we had to, like, you know, kind of do our own line the whole weekend. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if we had, like, a dedicated hallway to put people, that'd be super mm-hmm. great. And, you know, hallways that don't have choke points in it. So, yeah. I, mean, <sighs> I, I hear key. what's funny. I, 
I heard a lot about that sky bridge, but every mm. single time I went on it, it was like one in the morning or nine in the morning. So no one was ever <laughs> there. So there. Like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm super excited for that. Also, uh, on a space note, I'm excited to be you know back in DC because every time I went to AUSA, I'd always make sure to slip off and go to the Smithsonian and go nice. say hi to Apollo 11 or see uh, Discovery <laughs> down at the Udvar-Hazy Center. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, Otakon is a little bit extra work, but hopefully I'll be able to slip off and go do that again and yeah. you know, bum around and see some cool sights. Cool. Yeah. yeah it's going to be interesting to see just how, how that in general affects the, the con, too, because yeah. the inter- there, there's only so much you can do in the Inner Harbor um, you know, compared to D.C., where there's, I think it's going to you know, draw people in a little bit more. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, I think you could see, totally start seeing people, like, uh, you know, I th- maybe it'll make, like, a day rate a little more, a day visit uh, a little more uh, viable, you know, people who are going to... Uh, you know, go to Otakon for Saturday and then go to see the White House on a Sunday or something like that. Because, yeah. you know, like, I, again, like you said, I don't really know what you would do in Baltimore. Like, you know, uh, at this point, I pretty much enter the building on Wednesday night and leave it on Monday morning. Yeah. So I don't really know what's out there. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, and you, you certainly don't walk very far north from the convention center. It's like, you know, there comes yeah. a point where I'm like, no, um, I'm turning around now. No, thank yeah. you. Back you when know. more of our friends still went to Otakon, we used to... Uh, the staffers and our non-staffer friends, we'd all get one giant suite at a hotel about a mile north of the BCC. Mm. 